Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Ezra. I'm a couples and portrait photographer currently based in Vancouver, British Columbia. Now today's video is going to be a direct response to Dylan Dufault. He messaged me on Instagram asking for tips on how I pose couples and so I wanted to create this video to help address that. I'm breaking this video down into four parts. The first part I'm going to be sharing my mindset and how I approach couples photography in comparison to portrait photography. The second part I'm going to share some of my couples photos, I'm going to analyze them and show you what I'm looking for and what I'm directing for in the photos to get the photos that I want. The third part I'm going to be sharing my sort of starter and beginner poses that I start my couples off with during a session and talk about those as well. And the final fourth part I'm going to be sharing some tips that I wish I knew when I started shooting couples. Alright so for the first part of this video I'm talking about the difference in approach when it comes to couples photography versus a portrait photography. Now for me when I'm thinking of portrait photography I think of one person, when I think of couples photography I think of two people. So if you have ever shot two people before you know the dynamics in comparison to just shooting a single person is very different. Uh, for me the way I like to think of it and the way that makes sense in my mind is I think of portrait photography or shooting a single person as a dance, sort of like a partner dance. And at the end of the day when you look at the photos you're sort of experiencing those photos through me capturing them and then seeing the subject or the person that I'm shooting. Now when it comes to couples photography I think of it less of shooting two different people um, and dancing with two different people at once which in my mind seems very complicated. I think of it as standing back a little bit further. I am like the choreographer or the director of this, this scene and I have them interacting with each other. And I think that's what makes couple photography so special and what I love about it is because in that sense you're allowing them to interact with each other and sharing their story and how they connect and how they are with each other and that's so unique because it's going to be um, unique to them and you're not going to find that in another couple for example. It's going to be that special because it's their relationship and they're unique people. When I think of couples photography I think of it in a different approach than when I'm thinking of portrait photography. When I'm thinking of couples, I'm thinking of instead of posing them and having them pose in a certain way and adjusting both of them like I would if I was doing a portrait, I think of giving them an action and giving them an emotion. Uh, and so I pair those together. I think they're both important. You need to have both of them to get the type of photos that I like to shoot and that I like to share on my social media platforms. Uh, an example of that would be, I want you to take her hand and run down this road, so that would be like the action, and then the emotion to it, I would add at the end of that, and imagine that you're five years old or six years old, you guys are finished your school for the summer, you're running away, running out of the back of the house, and you're just super excited. So I'm taking that action, taking that emotion, and giving that to them. And then when I capture them doing that, uh, I'm not saying you need to have your hands this high or you need to crisscross your legs as you're running. I'm just giving them a very genuine action and a very genuine emotion and letting them take that and sort of mold it to be true to who they are. And then I capture that and it's going to be unique and it's going to be special in that sense. So before we move on to part two, I hope that all makes sense. Basically, if you were to summarize it, Couples photography for me, my approach is going to be more of a director or choreographer. I am going to be giving them an action and emotion and capturing the combination and see what happens after that. For part two of this video, I'm going to be sharing some of my photos that I've taken of different couples. We're going to break them down and analyze them and I'm going to share with you different things that I'm directing for and looking for during a photo shoot to get the photos that I want. There are four things in particular that I'm going to point out to you. The first thing is going to be points of contact, second thing is going to be eyes, third is going to be masculine or feminine poses, and fourth is going to be stacking. Okay, so for this first example, this is Ashley and Brayden. This is a really fun car wash photo shoot I did last year. And uh, to see the full video of this shoot, it was actually a pretty cool story and one of my favorite shoots from the summer. You can see in the link in the description, I'll put a link to that full video. You can check it out later. But uh, anyways, so the first thing we're looking at in this photo is going to be points of contact. Now if you can have a couple kissing but their hips are super far apart, it's going to feel and look awkward. So in general, the more points of contact, the more intimate the photo is going to look and it's just going to feel right when we look at it as well. So let's count the points of contact here. You can see Ashley's hands touching Braden's head, her other hand is going to be on his shoulder, uh, their noses are touching as well. So that's one, two, three points already. Both his hands are on either one of her legs, so that's four, five points and then her legs are touching his body as well, just on his hips. 
So that's, uh, oh, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven points of contact. It's a very beautiful photo and there's a lot of points of contact in it as well. Okay, so for this next photo, although there's not gonna be any points of contact, you can see that this photo, at least for me, I really like how it feels and how it flows. And this is gonna be a good example of how for a couple of shoots, instead of having everything superposed, like this wasn't a pre-constructed photo that I showed them, hey, let's do this, stand here, do this. Uh, instead, just like I mentioned before, I am using the uh, action and emotion formula. And so I said, okay, let's get Ashley on top of the vehicle, just sitting there. And then Brayden, if you just take the uh, brush and just like throw a whole bunch of soap onto her and he's like, okay, perfect um, And we got this really cool photo here where I'm just capturing all the in-between moments And those are the moments that I find are really really special just to show you again that this was all sort of happening live and candid Here's a photo right after it as well and so after I give instructions or directions for what I would like to see in the setting and they start doing them I basically am just looking for different angles and okay so this next example here is an engagement session that I did with my friends on the island Gabriel and Abby and uh, one of the things I usually do for warm-ups with my couple is I have them holding hands and walking away from me and then back towards me and the reason I do that is everyone's usually nervous before the beginning of a shoot and for the first little while of a shoot it's not uncommon that people are feeling a bit more nervous and a bit more clammy and so usually what I'll say to my couples as we're warming up is I'll say okay I just need to down the settings here and make sure that I have your uh, skin and clothes all exposed correctly with the sky if you guys would just hold hands and walk away from me and the reason that I do that is in my mind for me if I was going to be in their position I would feel super awkward especially uh, for the first part of a photo shoot so if by being able to hold my partner's hand and walk away from the camera I don't have to really worry about what my face looks like because the camera's not seeing it and we're in a moment between ourselves and walking is a very natural uh, movement as well and so it kind of just starts the ball rolling for our photo shoot. We'll usually do that a couple of times and in addition to that as well, I'll usually call it different things to them. The second time we do it, I'll just tell them, okay, we're gonna do it one more time. Uh, this time I'll get you guys to like look at each other, uh, maybe like push each other with your hips, pretend you're like in hockey practice or imagine that you're drunk and you're just bumping into each other, different things like that. And one of the things I'm looking for when I give those instructions and have them do the walk the second or third time is I'm looking to see who is initiating that. And to me, usually um, one of the keys in my couple's photo shoots is I'm wanting to see who's initiating it, who's more confident or comfortable um, using those instructions and those prompts and leading the, the partnership. Sometimes it's gonna be the guy, sometimes it's gonna be the girl. And all that is telling me is information that's super vital because then next time if I know that, for example, it's Gabe that's more uh, responding to the prompts quickly, I'll say, Gabe, can you do this? Or Gabe, can you do this? And then have him uh, start the prompts instead and then it will sort of become more natural. I'm just basically taking their momentum and uh, using it to the best way I can. So this photo, in addition to that, we'll look at points of contact and eyes. Uh, so points of contact, you can see all of Abby's bodies leaning into Gabe's here. Their hands are holding as well. So there's a fairly large part of their body that's in contact with each other, which makes them look connected and like a unit. Another thing I'm going to point out here is their eyes. If you look at Gabe's eyes and Abby's eyes, they're basically both closed from what I can remember and can tell here. His eyes are looking this way, her eyes are looking that way. And you can also see that um, Gabe's head is pointing this way. This, like, this is the line of where his head is and Abby's, this is the line of where hers is. And by having both of their heads pointing towards each other, sort of like a uh, party hat or like a triangle, that's further showing more points and lines of connection as well. And it, to our mind, our unconscious mind, it looks, um, it looks right for this type of photo at least. Um, now when I'm talking about eyes, we'll look at it further. There's more examples I wanna show you different things about eyes, but usually if you have, for me at least, if you have both of your um, couple or their eyes looking directly towards you then it sort of solves the photo for you like you already know where to look and it's but when you have your couple's eyes not looking directly at the camera uh, it feels like the moment is more to them and it's more pure and it's more undefined and in that sense it gives the viewers or it gives um, whoever's looking at the photo is an opportunity to try and decipher and feel that moment for them as well. And that's one of the things that I find is different from portrait photography versus couples photography. 
uh, whereas portrait photography you're sort of experiencing the photos through the photographer's eyes. In couples photography, you're experiencing the photos by looking at the two different parties. They're telling you how to experience the photos or where to look. Here's another pose uh, and a photo with Gabe and Abby here. So points of contact, again, their hips are very close to each other. Their hands are touching, their noses are touching. So it's a very intimate photo and it feels very intimate because there's so many points of contact. Again, with their eyes here, I like to alternate and have one of the people in the shoot usually have their eyes or pointing down or have their eyes closed and have the other person's eyes open a little bit because for us we naturally will look to see whose eyes are open and that sort of captivates us first in some ways uh, and then we're trying to decide what they're looking at we're trying to interpret the photo for ourselves. so here's an example there's two photos here this one and this one so what I want to point out here is if you look at the angle of Gabe's head so if you imagine a line cutting through his head that line would go all the way out this way and if you look at Abby the line of her head would go all the way this way so you can see they're both sort of pointing away and it's a very small thing but if you compare this photo here to the second photo here it looks and it feels very different now there, there's not a lot different of the photos maybe a small expression on Gabe's face is a little bit different and this photo here he's sort of leaning back but this was the original photo and then I caught it right away that these lines are going to intersect and it's not going to be that pleasing to our eye subconsciously and so I had Gabe lean his head back back towards Abby and then so his lines going up this way and hers is sort of going up as well and those lines are closer as if they were going to intersect uh, and so it looks more intimate and looks more like a quiet and private moment and that's sort of the photos that I really like to capture in this type of setting and again points of contact here and again eyes not looking straight at the camera but looking down towards each other Gabe's ahead of looking down towards the bottom of the blanket and Abby's ahead of her just looking down sort of just letting her eyes be heavy and closed so this is the last photo from this examples that I pulled from Gabe and Abby's shoot and this one here you can see there's loads of points of contact uh, Abby's hands are pulled onto Gabe, Gabe's arms are wrapped around her uh, his uh, chest is touching her back and just like pulled in close. I love these type of photos where I get the partner to come behind the other person just give them a big bear hug and it's a very natural feeling you don't have to give a lot of direction for that and the emotions and the reactions you can get from these types of photos are really pure and just really candid moments as well. Alright so this next example is going to be with Jennifer and Malcolm, uh, two friends that I actually ended up meeting at Golden Years and then asked them if they would, uh, after we introduced each other, asked them if they would do a photo shoot with me and they were happy to do that and we got some really cool photos. So in this photo here is another example again of not having both people looking directly into the camera. I have Jennifer looking towards me, I have Malcolm's Island going over here and the reason again that I do that is it helps to tell the viewer where to look immediately like your eyes usually get drawn to whoever's looking at you so your eyes get drawn to Jennifer first and then you try and decipher what Malcolm's looking at and it makes the photo in my sense and thinking more interesting and also if we're talking about uh, masculine and feminine poses I have uh, Jennifer just tucked in a little bit behind Malcolm here and Malcolm's shoulders and chest facing directly to me. So that's a bit more of a masculine pose um, and it sort of communicates to us as well that Jennifer is sort of behind him or shooting part of her behind him and that makes it a bit more of a feminine pose. Uh, besides that, they're basically standing at the same uh, plane as well. Here's another example of that again. So I have a Jennifer tucked behind Malcolm and typically that's the way that I will often pose my couples. I'll have um, the guy sort of in front or looking larger and the girl tucked in behind or folding in towards him. Uh, in this case here, I don't have their eyes looking at me. I have them both looking out of the uh, the truck here and that to the viewer is trying to communicate something different than if they were looking towards the camera both of them so for us now we're trying to see and feel what they were feeling at that time and what they're looking at and it's a more interesting photo as a result also if you think of points of contact her body is basically touching his whole side of his body here so it's a lot of points of contact again their heads you think of the two lines they're intersecting as well another photo here again you can see i have stacked malcolm closer to the camera making him look larger and had Jennifer tucked behind and another time here where they're not looking at the camera I have them sort of both in the moment uh, imagining that the wind's just blowing through the car it's like a country field and you're just smelling the wheats and so that's like the action and the emotion again if you think of it so the action is when you guys leaning into each other have your heads tilted towards each other Malcolm have your hand on the steering wheel and the emotion is try and emulate or feel what you would feel 
if the wind was just blowing through the truck and you're smelling that wheat on a summer's day. This is the final photo from the shoot I did with Jennifer and Malcolm. Uh, again, another example of not having both of their eyes looking towards me and again having Jennifer stacked behind Malcolm, uh, that being a bit more of a feminine pose and having his chest fully uh, facing the camera so that's a bit more of a masculine pose. Uh, points of contact again, their hips are going to basically be touching, her whole right side of her body is pushed into his, uh, behind his, her hands there and everything is looking like it is stacked together. Again, you can see his head, headline is basically straight, but hers is leaning towards him, so that's going to eventually intersect and that looks right to our unconscious mind. Okay, for this example here, these are my friends who recently got married. This is Alicia and Josh. And so for this photo here, I do often have photos as well where both people are looking directly into the camera, especially for a close-up like this. I want them both to be looking into the camera so they're both sort of equally present and we can see both of them when we look at the photo as well. There definitely are cases where you have both of your people in your photos looking directly towards the camera. Uh, I don't do that all the time but it definitely is uh, the right thing for some photos. Points of contact, hips and chest are touching, hands are touching, and then their faces are touching as well. So it looks more intimate and close. So you take an example or you take a look at this photo and see how your eyes are like, you look at the photo and your eyes are like, okay, do I look here or do I look here? Um, and it kind of goes back and forth. And look how that is different than if we do a photo like this, which is a uh, portrait of just Alicia. You can see that she's on uh, Josh's shoulder here. So lots of points of contact their heads his head's actually leaning a little bit away uh, so if I had an opportunity to correct that or notice that I would have him lean back towards her tuck his ear maybe behind her head and then those two heads would intersect more but lots of points of contact and it's very clear right away where you're supposed to look when you see this photo and again sorry before I go to the next photo more of a feminine pose as well you can see that I've had her uh, sort of looking up through her eyelashes towards me I'm shooting from a little bit above her it's basically a bit more of a feminine pose in comparison to when we flip sides so this one here, I've had Josh open his shoulders up a little bit more, it's a bit more of a masculine pose. Instead of having uh, myself shooting from directly above him, I'm shooting more um, eye level towards him. And instead of having him leaning towards the camera as you would to make more of a feminine pose or him more leaning towards the camera, I have him almost uh, looking straight up and or almost leaning away from the camera a little bit. My line is going completely straight out here. More of a masculine pose here and again you're seeing by this his eyes are not looking directly at me so we're trying to look at this photo and understand what he's looking at or what he's feeling uh, in this moment. Okay, so for this example here, again, we're gonna look at the different uh, four points that I've talked about. We're looking at points of contact, lots of points of contact. We have uh, Miranda and Harrison here. Miranda's wrapping her arm around Harrison's arm. Her other hand's touching his arm as well. Both her legs are over his legs and his hands are touching her legs. Their four heads are together. So a lot of points of contact makes it more intimate as well. Uh, eyes are sort of dropped or their eye lines are sort of dropped down here and here. Uh, that way it's a bit more of an intimate photo and you're trying to look at it and decide for yourself and interpret it what they're feeling and what uh, that's communicating to you and it's more of a moment between themselves and it's um, less of an invitation because their eyes aren't looking towards us the viewers I just want to talk about stacking as well I've already touched on it a little bit but basically when I think of stacking it sort of is tied into like the masculine and feminine type of posing and so in this example as well you'll see that positioned Harrison closer to the camera makes it a bit larger a bit more masculine had his shoulders open up a bit towards me a bit more and then have Miranda tuck her right shoulder just slightly behind his have her legs sort of folded up as if she's like thinking of being like a really small animal and he's like bigger and protecting her and that's kind of the um, the reasoning behind the posing here. Here's another beautiful photo of Miranda and Harrison. Again, lots of points of contact, very similar to in a previous photo I showed where uh, Gabriel was hugging um, Abby this time. Uh, Harrison's hugging Miranda. It's again a classic hugging from behind, a little bit different because they're sitting down on this one. And I think for this one here, I just had her look back towards him and then had Harrison using his nose just like to try and tickle her face. Talk about points of connection in this one here, basically all the points of contact. Again, I love how soft this photo looks with both of their eyes not being seen. It really feels like it's a moment towards themselves. It feels very intimate, lots of points of contact. Uh, we have stacking happening here as well. I have um, him stacked behind her. And so Remy's feeling and looking a bit smaller because he's right behind her and you can see more of him than you can see of her in some ways. Like you see his shoulder and arm sort of blocking her, 
his knees sort of surrounding her and his arms going across her as well. Another photo again. So you've probably seen a bit of a theme here where uh, you don't see a lot of the uh, couple's eyes looking directly into the camera. Part of that I think is just the way I shoot and I like how it makes the moments feel a bit more intimate and how you as the viewer sort of have to decipher what you're looking at and try and interpret it based on how they're feeling. And so that's another example again of how I find portrait photography is different than couples photography because it's less linear and this time there it's almost like a triangle as opposed to a line. Whereas I'm standing at one point and shooting both of these parties but they're also communicating together and I'm trying to capture that story and that parallel between them. And so it's more like a triangle in that sense and it's a really cool way of looking at couples photography I find. Okay, so the last examples are gonna be from this super fun shoot that I did with Joe and Glow. I think I posted a couple weeks ago on my YouTube channel with this video and so you can check it out there. I'll put a link in the description as well for Joe and Glow. And you can check out their work on Instagram or check out the YouTube link to the full video I did from this shoot. So if you look at this photo here, let's go over the four things we've talked about already. So number one, points of contact. You can see her hands here, her chest is touching his chest, her other arms wrapped around, his arms wrapped around hers, and then Joe's forehead is coming down, his nose is coming down, they're touching there as well. So a lot of points of contact making the photo look very connected and very intimate. A second thing you're looking at eyes, the eyes are looking towards each other or just dropped and that if you just have your couples drop their eyes a little bit or like look down, uh, it can make the moment feel more intimate in the sense of uh, you don't know what they're feeling so you have to kind of decide what it is for yourself and you don't get the opportunity to just like see their eyes right away as well and I like how how it looks having their eyes sort of drop and so I do that intentionally with most of my couples when I'm shooting with them. Uh, talking about uh, masculine and feminine poses as you can see I have Joe's shoulders open towards me his chest is more exposed and then I have a glow sort of tucked in beside him or behind her with her other shoulder that being a bit more of a feminine pose and that's again an example of stacking. Here's another photo of them here on um, this one here we're just having them sit down and um, just goofing around with each other so I noticed that they were sitting like this and it looked really cool. Again you can see lots of points of contact, you can see their eyes, obviously your eyes are drawn to uh, glows because they're a bit closer to facing directly towards the camera. In regards to masculine and feminine poses I have a Joe behind her, sort of like her shield, her big bear to take care of her and his arms and his legs are wrapped around her to kind of keep her safe. And then lastly, stacking again, you can see that instead of having her have both her shoulders and chest face exactly the same line as his, they're sort of folded in towards him as well. If we're talking about lines, this was the example I was referring to. If you think about lines, uh, think about Glory's headline going straight up and then Joe's going straight up as well. Almost, if you think of it, you can see his chins here and the top of his head's here. His line's almost going out and away. So if you look at this photo and you look at this photo in comparison, it's very different. And if you, the connection you can tell is a lot more uh, in this photo as opposed to the first one. Reasons for that, you can see that there's a lot of empty space here where there's no point of connection. You can also see both of their lines are not going to intersect. Here you can see that the connection, it, sorry, the points of contact are a lot higher. Her whole body is leaning towards his. You can also see that their head lines are connected as well where they intersect almost immediately. Her head's going up this way and then Joe's head's going up that way so they intersect right away. Again, another example of stacking. Uh, it's a bit harder to see this time, but if you think of it this way, I have the full side view of uh, Joe right here and then I have Gloria sort of pushing in towards him and folding into him. Okay in the final photo from part two of this video you can see that we have Joe and Glow on their Jeep here and uh, there's just them at the end of the shoot. This is one of the reasons that I really like having a camera that I can just shoot really fast on and I'm um, always being ready to capture the in-between moments. This is a perfect example of that because as you can see here um, this was just like a very candid moment where I just had them sitting on the vehicle. I think uh, I just had described something to them and then Gloria did this or Glow did this and then uh, Joe looked up and saw what she was doing and sticking her tongue out and then copied her and I caught it that uh, 
brief second before they went back to doing something else. But that's going to be my examples I wanted to share with you for part two of this video. Again, I like to break down these photos. Hopefully it helps you and you can break down your photos and look at them in this sense as well. This isn't a rule book or law, obviously. This is just the way that I approach couple shoots and having to uh, think of things during the shoot. These are four things that I think of. I want to make sure that their points of contact are high so the photos look more intimate unless I'm purposely having them standing apart. The second thing is I want to make sure that their eyes uh, make sense where their eyes are so I'm having them both look at the camera. Why am I doing that? If I want a more intimate photo or a photo where it's kind of like them in their own moments, then I want to make sure their eyes are not both looking at the camera. If I want to draw one of the couple's eyes right to the camera for any particular reason, I have to make sure that the other person doesn't have their eyes pointing towards the camera as well. Uh, thinking about masculine and feminine posing, who I have closer to the camera, who I have both of their shoulders and chest open towards me as opposed to the other person folding into them, and then stacking as well. So those are four things that I think about during a photo shoot with my couples, and maybe it's something that you can incorporate as well and see how it influences your photos as well. Okay, so for part three of this video, I wanna share with you uh, sort of three poses that I always go to as sort of my starter poses or warm-up poses, and you will see that they're pretty consistent. I have these poses in almost all my photo shoots with couples, and they're pretty easy, so I wanna share those poses with you and talk about how I get into them. Okay, so this is gonna be the first pose that I wanna share with you, and it's the behind the back hug. And so it's when you get one person to come behind the other person's back and give them basically a hug. It's, uh, I find, a very genuine and easy uh, prompt. It doesn't really take much more explaining. You just say, can you stand behind your partner and then just give them a bear hug from behind. There's a bunch of variations. You can have them hug the person and then pick them up, or you can have the person behind be in a piggyback position. Um, so this one, for example, Gabe's a lot taller than Abby. He's standing behind her and just giving her a hug and sort of leaning over her like a big bear and it looks really cool. You're able to have their faces close together. Uh, it doesn't take up a whole bunch of your frame. And in addition to that as well, it just looks and it feels uh, cozy and comfy because it's a something that as a viewer you can look at and you can be like, oh yeah, I know what that feels like. Then it's easy to interpret. So that's the behind the back hug. And I'll show you a couple different variations. Here's one as well. Okay, so this is a small variation to the uh, behind the back hug. For this one here, you actually can't see Miranda's other hand, but it's below here. And I can call this one the seatbelt hug, where one arm goes over the shoulder and one arm comes underneath the other arm, sort of like a seatbelt. The reason I do that is if you have both of your arms going underneath and around your partner, sort of like a seatbelt, it looks very much like a maternity or a pregnancy photo. And so I try not to do that as much as I can. And I suggest uh, if you can, this is a good variation to have one of those arms going over the shoulder. Here's another variation of the behind the back hug again. So I'm basically just stacking one person in front of the other. Another example here, another example here. So this one here, I have Daniela standing on this log behind Luke and just hugging him from behind like that. Okay, so the second pose that I often do or prompt that I do is the on the shoulder one. So this is the example of it here. So again, this one is another one that I like to warm up with because you're basically just giving your partner a hug. It feels very safe. You don't feel as vulnerable or exposed because both of your bodies are close to each other. You're just hugging them. Usually this is a good one as well when you're warming up because if you're doing a photo shoot and the, um, the guy didn't really want to be there or is not quite warm yet, then you can have him not having to look at the camera right away and it's sort of a good warm up. And obviously, in most cases, the girl is the one that wanted the photo shoot or has put more time into getting her face ready or her makeup ready. And so she's ready and happy to do that. And so I will usually start with having um, the girl have her face towards me and the guy face away. So that's an example of the sort of on the shoulder prompt here where one head's behind the other. Here's another example of that, a bit of a variation here. So instead of shooting from the side, I'm shooting sort of from behind and seeing Tessa's face over uh, his shoulder there. Again, this is a super easy uh, prompt to get into where you just have them hug each other and then uh, have her head come to the side so that it's closer to the camera. The last really common one that I like to do as well is this one here where you have both of their hips together. It's a very easy transition from the one where you had 
um, the girls head closer towards the camera and the guys head away. Now you just have them, okay, just separate it yourselves, have your hips still touching, and then bring your foreheads together like you're telepathically telling each other something. And then you, there's lots of different problems you can do there. You can do like an Eskimo kiss, have their like noses rubbing, um, or use one person's nose and try and like draw a smiley face on another person's forehead, or have the guy kiss. If the guy's taller, have her kiss the girl's forehead or her on the nose. There's lots of different problems you can do from this position, but this is the third one here, forehead to forehead. This is almost a variation of that as well. So those are going to be the three poses that uh, I would encourage you, if you don't already use them, to use them as sort of your warm-up poses or add them to your repertoire of prompts that you like to do with your couples. Again, they're great warm-up ones because um, both people are pretty close to each other. It doesn't really matter what the bottom half of your couple is doing. You're not going to really see them if you're shooting tight. And the main thing is just to have those points of contact and you're just manipulating small different things. And like you saw in the last pose where you had their noses or their foreheads touching, there's lots of different variations you can get out of that. And uh, by very small movements, for example, like just having your noses rubbing together or trying to draw smiley faces on each other's faces with your nose and things like that. In part four of this video, I'm talking about the three tips that I wish I knew prior to shooting couples. The first tip is to use a mood board. This is basically a way for you to communicate with your couple to make sure that you're both on the same page prior to your photo shoot. The way this helps is in your mood board you can use a lot of photo references to make sure that you're on the same page when it comes to the style of photos, the type of posing, the clothing, the environment, all of that, hair and makeup. You can communicate that all with references and photos with your couples to make sure you're on the same page prior to the photo shoot. The second tip is to creep your couples in advance. Basically, this is doing your research. So if their accounts are public, you can look to see different types of photos that they have on their account to see what they value. For example, if they're as a couple more editorial or more into really posy type of photos that are more extravagant, then I'm gonna include more of those photos in the mood board. And then if their photos are more sort of candid and genuine looking and just like in the moment photos, I wanna include those to make uh, the photo shoot and the uh, mood board more tailored towards them. Well, obviously either case I'm gonna ask them, it just gives me a bit of a reference. And tip number three is going to be what you would basically do on the photo shoot day, and that is to observe and communicate. So for me, I'm observing my couples to make sure they're okay. Uh, usually, especially in BC during the fall and winter, it does get a little bit colder, and so I'm observing to see if one of the people are getting cold or both of them are getting cold. Um, and typically, it's gonna be the girl that's getting cold based on just what she's wearing. If she's wearing a dress, for example, it's not super warm or insulated. And so I know that she's gonna be starting to feel uh, less confident and feeling not herself in front of a camera as she gets colder. And so I wanna make sure that I'm adjusting for that. It's gonna also affect the guy as well because he'll pick up on that hopefully. And that will just change the whole dynamic. And so that's one of the reasons I carry blankets or encourage my couples to bring gloves. And the reason I have hot packs in my car as well. And that's one of the reasons that I say that observing is very important. The other thing as well is you can pick up a lot in just being very observant during your photo shoot. You can see who's responding to your prompts quicker and then in turn you can direct the prompts directly to that person and that will streamline your whole process as you're directing your couples. Uh, communication is obviously super important. During a photo shoot I'm almost always talking to my couples the whole time whether uh, I'm just keeping the momentum going by saying okay try this next or let's do this next or you guys are doing really good or hold that. I'm always communicating keeping that communication open and by doing that it does show confidence as well. So even if you haven't done a lot of couple shoots before and even if you're using different prompts or poses that you've saved to your phone, that's totally okay. You can still come across as knowledgeable and confident. Uh, you can say, I have these poses on my phone that I wanna share with you. There's this one and this one I wanna see if you guys are interested in. What do you guys think? And you can start that as a sort of open communication between your couple as well as you start your photo shoot. And I wouldn't recommend doing that maybe right in the beginning, but as you've already started shooting a little bit, or maybe you use the three poses that I recommended to you, Start with those and then branch off and then um, if you need more ideas or if you want to take a bit of a break then pull out the prompts or the different uh, poses that you've saved and you can just explain to them that you've saved these because you thought they would suit them and you want to try them out with them. Alright so that's a wrap. Those are the four different parts of the video I wanted to share with you. 
I hope it does help you out, Dylan. So let me know in the comments below if that helped you. And also whoever's watching as well, if this video was helpful for you, please leave a comment and like and subscribe if you're not already. You can also follow me on Instagram at Ezra Tsai Photography. I'd love to uh, hear what you guys are thinking about this type of content. And until next time, make new friends and shoot them. Bye-bye.